Hey there folks and welcome to this video. This one here is about F1's Wii Racers 1 display ahead of the Austrian Grand Prix. For those of you that are familiar with what it is, it started off as a kind of end races and protest ahead of the Austrian Grand Prix last season. The first of the doubleheader of Red Bull Ring that time around. Where drivers, uh, as part of the Grand Prix Drivers Association, led at the time by Roman Grosjean and Sebastian Vettel, decided to, for the most part, kneel before the National Anthem played. It later got adopted by F1 um, after they hid it from the World V to the Steering Grand Prix and became part of a wider end racism message. And then it became We Race This One for 2021. And essentially what happens is a pre-played video, pre-made video, sorry, plays out. And then after that, uh, they'd have about a half minute to decide what they're going to do gesture-wise. And... It's a way to integrate it a bit like how, say, in football, like we've been seeing with the Euros before each match, um, the majority of players will elect to kneel. And F1 does have its Why Do We Racist One message, which one of the tenets is Ed Racism. But a lot of these goals are not necessarily fought out with definitive objectives like this many people will be recruited in this many positions by this time to be fair some of the sustainability ones are but they're also largely in line with whatever governments have as policies so for example bans on single use plastics but yeah uh if you want to see any of my previous videos about this you can find them in the description below especially on other kinds of topics related to it but I'm not out here going, oh, let's try and cancel anyone who doesn't deal. Because at the end of the day, there are a lot of them that don't deal who wear, like, a shirt saying Black Lives Matter on it. So, supposedly, they agree with the messaging, right? In fact, the main reason why I want to talk about something this week is because of Haas. And I didn't know whether to do this in this video. Or as part of my own general notes thing where I talk in a more unscripted way. But one of the things I wanted to talk about is this supposed like rehabilitation of Nikita Mazepin. As his second driver for the season. And uh, the bringing in of title sponsor Uro Kali. His dad's business. He's son of a billionaire if you didn't already know. But... Yeah, Haas is trying to reimagine him as Mazaspin, which is the joke that everyone started giving him because they didn't want him on the grid because just after he was announced as a driver, a video was uploaded to his Instagram with him groping a drunk woman. So, yeah, people were understandably outraged that he kept his drive and that F1, the FIA, were like, we support Haas's findings here. So they just wanted to mock the guy, which, well, he's been accused of racism and homophobia with quite credible reasons before, as well as, for example, a literal assault on Calibai Lot. So I can understand people want to be outraged. But yeah, I saw uh, writings from the likes of Dre Harrison and Hazel Southwell over the past week who've been like, well, Haas have tried to rebrand him and they've got bloody good PR about it. And it is a bit concerning because it sort of detracts away from the reasons why so many people were critical of Mazepin. And especially because, like, the things about his dangerous driving, well, we saw Baku where he nearly put his own teammate into a wall during a last lap battle. You've seen half the grid already shouting at him over the course of the season for his behaviour. Including, on multiple occasions, Kimi Raikkonen. But also Sergio Perez, like Lewis Hamilton as well. Uh, Vettel. The Williamses. But yeah, it also includes his own teammate. The dangerous driving. And this is what kind of detracts away from it. Like, there are a lot of people who go, Oh, but you should be making a point about this every time. Problem is, if we stop making a void about it, then we just almost condone this sort of behaviour. 
And it's not like it's entirely irredeemable to do any of the things that was done. Like any individual thing. Of course, for example, groping a drunk woman, that is incredibly horrible. But then if he went on and decided to dedicate a lot of his time outside of F1 for years to helping victims of domestic violence or uh, sexual violence, including if you're from a financially uh, wealthy background, donating lots of money to helping these kinds of survivors. And you'd say this is somebody who's actually looking to right the wrongs that they've done. I mean, look at Carl Larson, who was sacked from his job in NASCAR last year for using what can probably only be described as the worst kind of racial slur that you can on a live stream. Yeah, he found himself out of a job, but he worked a lot to try and work his way not only back into the sport, but uh, redeem himself as a person. He worked with a lot of charities and organizations that helped underprivileged kids from minority ethnic groups. Um, so, yeah, this is a kid who came up through NASCAR's Diversity Initiative, who's now come back up, because he not only is one of the arguably best talents out there, but because he wants to make amends for the wrongs that he's done. I'd say that's something that uh, Verstappen should have done after his um, racist and ableist comments directed at Lance Stroll last year. And it was something that Mazepin should do for each of the transgressions he's had in the past. And the only way that you can do that is by generally being remorseful. I don't really know if he is. And I'm not going to give him the benefit of the doubt of being remorseful. We have to see these actions. But at least those are my thoughts. And uh, let me know yours in the comment section down below. Because I'm talking about somebody who has seemingly been framed out of a lot of these Free Racist One broadcasts. He knelt when it was um, commemoration of VE Day. So this was for his ancestors. And... Yeah, he's been very quiet, and... I'm not going to say it's him, but... At least he's got a bloody good PR team who are figuring out the best way to sort of reimagine him for the F1 audience. On that note, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you around.